Hey guys, welcome to Piping Engineers. In today's video, we will see about the different types of stresses that act in a piping system. We will also learn what are the different types of loads that act on the piping system, what is the impact of those loads and what are the different types of stresses caused due to those loads. So guys, for more videos and updates, please like, follow and subscribe to our channel. So let's begin our today's video and learn about the different types of stresses that act in the piping system. So guys, what is a stress? Stress we all have learned in our college days and we all know that stress it is the resistance provided by the body against the applied load per unit area. So basically what stress is? Stress it is the resistance that a body will be providing against the any force when it is applied on it. Whether a tensile force is applied then also body will be providing some resistance or if some compressive force is applied then also body will be imposing some resistance. So this resistance that is offered by body is known as the stress. So mathematically stress is given by P upon A. So where P, what is P? P is the applied load. It may be your compressive load, tensile load or your shear load and A it is the area of cross section on which the load is being applied. So the unit of stress is Newton per meter square. So this is the unit of stress and this is the base this basic stress is the only thing that we will be discussing on our today's video. So this stress occurs in different ways due to different loads in our piping system and it hampers or destroys sometimes destroys the whole piping network. So what is a piping stress? So what is piping stress? Piping stress is also generated when a load is acting on a pipe when a load acts on a pipe and tries to deform it and when your pipe is fixed up from your both ends if you see that this pipe is fixed from both the ends and suppose due to internal pressure due to internal pressure some load some force is acting on the pipe and if this the pipe body provides some resistance and if that if that resistance is not sufficient so the body will get deformed and some and it will be happening like this so if we see here piping stress is generated whenever a load acts on piping system it may be your internal pressure or it may be due to external forces and that what that load does it tries to deform it so due to inertia effect inertia effect we all know when a body if your body is in rest it tries to stay in rest if a body is in motion it tries to stay in motion so due to inertia effect what happens the piping system uh, it resists that forces so by an internal resistance forces creating the stress so as i already told you that if that internal resistance is less than the external force that is applied on the body then your pipe will get resisted your pipe will get deformed or we can say and if the internal resistance is greater then there will be no deformation in our the in our system so the piping system will some will look like this however we can say that there will be stresses but stresses will not be able to deform our piping system so moving on to next let's see what are the different types of loads due to which the stresses occur so different types of piping loads piping loads they are generally divided into three things one is your primary load another is your secondary load and the third is occasional loads so what this primary secondary and occasional load means so primary load basically if we see about the primary load primary loads they are due to they are self loads or they are known as the self loads of the system so it may be the due to the dead weight of the pipe or when the fluid is moving into the through the pipe it is due to the live weight it is due to the internal pressure because the pressure is also force pressure is given by force upon an area so the when a fluid or a gas or something like that is moving inside the pipe so it will also provide some internal force so that is internal pressure uh, rail and truck weights for buried piping suppose your pipe is underground and some uh, vehicle movement is having is uh, happening up uh, on the top of the pipe so that will be also some load that will be occurring on the pipe due to that moment so all these loads they are the weight of the they are the system loads and they are generally present throughout the piping lifetime so your dead weight will be present your live weight will be present if your if your piping system is in operation there will be some internal pressure or if it is an underground pipe uh, a, a, including these loads there will be some rail and truck ways so due to vehicular movement also so all these are your primary loads so next thing is your secondary load secondary load they are basically uh, have occur because of your thermal expansion like load temperature change anchors and resistance etc 
so in many cases uh, suppose if we want to convey steam or chilled water so there may be expansion and contraction in our pipe due to temperature changes in, because in both the cases our temperature may be either greater than the ambient condition or it may be lower than the ambient condition so if your pipe is anchored anchored means if it is tight if it is tightened or if it is completely uh, bolted or uh, supported from both the ends means it is having zero axial movement then they may there will be some stresses due to this temperature changes so these fall under the secondary loads next is occasional load so so guys if we design a system we design it for let's say 10 years 20 years so there may be chances that uh, there will be some winds uh, due to static winds and due to seismic load there may be some earthquakes also so occasional loads may occur due to your static winds or due to seismic load so there will be some movements in pipe pipe rack or even in your piping system due to these occasional loads also because wind will also try to move your pipe from its position same way seismic loads will also try to do so so these are the three types of loads that we generally take into account while designing a piping system and while going for its analysis path so guys let's see what are the different types of stresses which occurs due to the accompany, accompanying of these three loads so let's see what are the different types of stresses so the different types of stresses that we are, will be talking are basically normal stresses they act in a direction normal to the face of material so if we see the face of the material they are normally act on to the face of the material normal stresses may be either tensile means they they will be if uh, like this they, they they can be in tensile in nature they they can even try to compress your body and they can even apply it in more than one direction depending on the application and type of loads so basically when a system is designed we take into account either my either there may be forces uh, tensile forces in the system they may be compressive and there may be shear forces even in the system so a system is designed taking account into all of these so basically normal stresses are divided into these three parts one is your longitudinal or axial stress next is your hope or circumferential stress and last one is radial stress so all these things we all have studied in our engineering time also so basically these type of stresses they act on our piping system so what is this longitudinal or axial stress so longitudinal or axial stress as its name suggests it acts parallel to the longitudinal axis if you can see here so this is the longitudinal axis and the axial force will also be applied through this itself only so this force what happens this force axis parallel to the longitudinal axis of the pipe center line axis so this is your pipe center line axis and this is acting here so this is parallel to the pipe longitudinal axis and it is given by p d naught by 40 so p d is your internal pressure internal pressure of the fluid that will be flowing through this pipe and d naught is your outside diameter of the pipe and t is your thickness of the pipe so basically this is one of the stress that acts uh, that acts and tries to uh, deform the pipe from its actual position or actual support position so because of the pipe support the pipe provide uh, resists its movement and this type of stress is induced in your piping body so let's see our next stress next stress is our hoop stress so hoop stress is also one of the important stress that acts along the body so what is the difference between hoops and hoop stress and longitudinal stress longitudinal stress as i already told in your last slide it acts parallel to the piping axis but in in case of your hoop stress or circumferential stress it's acts perpendicular to the axial or circumferential direction if you can see the circumferential stress it is acting like this if and longitudinal axis is like this so this is acting parallel so but it is given by sh is equal to p d naught by 2t again where p is your internal pressure d naught is your outside diameter and thickness t is equal to is the thickness of the pipe so it's it's given by this formula and this is also one of the important stress that acts on the piping system and tries to deform our piping system so basically these two are the basic stresses that are mainly responsible for the piping deformation next one is your radial stress radial stress is generally not taken into account while a stress analysis for a piping system is done why because the radial stress acts parallel to the pipe radius so pipe, pipe, pipe parallel to the pipe radius and caused by internal pressure so it varies between your internal design pressure at the inside pipe and 
atmospheric pressure at outside pipe surface. Basically, its value is very less as compared to uh, your longitudinal stress or hoop stress. So, most of the designers, while calculating the pipe stresses, they ignore this or they do not consider this pipe radial stress in their stress calculation because this value can be neglected because it's very small. So these are the three types normal stresses that acts along the piping system. Another is one of the stresses your shear stress in that shear stress your force is applied tangentially at, a, at an angle of phi that is as shear stress is given by shear load upon shear area. So that that's also uh, value of that shear stress is also not so much. So uh, it varies from designer to designer some designers consider the value of shear stress and some don't. But basically longitudinal stress and hoop stress are the two main stresses that are taken into account while the calculation part. So let's see are the last stress that is thermal ex or expansion stress. The thermal or expansion stress that is uh, why it happens it happens because of the secondary loads that is due to the thermal expansion or change. So our, our pipe is in ambient condition because it is subjected to atmospheric atmospheric ambient conditions but when a fluid of high temperature or low temperature is moving inside our pipe so there may be chances that our pipe may get may try to enlarge and it may or it may try to expand or it may try to contract so due to this expansion and contraction in the pipe the stresses are induced in the pipe surface so with change in temperature pipe length is changed as this free thermal movement is restricted by its end supports connection expansion stress is created so in order to avoid this expansion stress expansion piping stress you would have seen we provide some expansion loops in our piping system so this expansion loops they are just provided so that our thermal expansion can be accommodated so basically these are the four types of stresses that are studied in your piping system while calculating the uh, analysis part so these type of stresses if they are not considered properly so the, the so your piping system may get fail or life of your piping system may be hampered so while calculating all this all the, while calculating the life cycle of the piping system or while going for a piping stress analysis all these stresses are taken into account so guys i hope in today's video you would have been able to see what are the stresses that act along the piping system and it would have been very useful to you so guys for more videos and updates please like follow and subscribe to our channel so guys thank you for watching our today's video thanks a lot